All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory due to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well, and peace and salutations and many blessings to the elect. We know those to be the, the house of David. Those are the men that were established with Yahweh Shai before the foundations of the earth who helped kick this thing off alongside with Yahweh Shai. And I want to go into a, a lesson, just pretty much didn't want to make it too long, but it's however the spirit rolls, but it's going into the doctrine that we have, all right? Because a lot of people think that this doctrine is something that's new, okay? Now, of course, we know it is a new song, but this doctrine that we preach was started from the foundations of the earth, all right? When that instruction was given to Adam, and then it was reestablished unto Moses, and then when Yahweh, and then the prophets, of course, and then when Yahweh Shai was on the scene, there's nothing different to the doctrine. It's just been away from the earth for so long, people think it sounds crazy or whatever. That's why a lot of these naysayers, these Christians, and two thirds of these Jake coming against us like we're crazy, talking mess. But whenever they step in front of us in person, and they try to they try to debate whatever the cause is, they get shut down. All right. We're not being confounded, and we know that's through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. They come up to us and they're shocked at the amount of knowledge that we have. They are, they're shocked at the amount of wisdom that we have, the stuff that we know pertaining to the scriptures. They don't expect it before they come up to the camp. All right? That's why they only can resort to being carnal at the end of the day, talking mess, doing all things under the sun, man, because they don't got nothing else to say, you know? But. The reason why this is the case, because this knowledge that we have didn't start from us. It was given to us from the Heavenly Father. OK, and even when Yahweh Shai was on the scene and I'm, I'm and really I'm going to start at John 15. But I'm, before I bring this out, I'm going to say this. Even when Yahweh Shai was on the scene, even the wicked scribes and the Pharisees were astonished at the amount of knowledge that he had. And they made a statement like he don't even got no letters. All right. Now, of course, you know, Jake has that in their mind, says like these men know a lot. But even within these Christians, man. They tell you that you got to go to some theologian seminary school in order to receive in order to receive this doctrine. All right. Now, I will say this. <laughs> Those schools are hella off. They don't teach you the truth. And also, too, you pay money in order to do that, man. You know, you got people thousands of dollars in debt just by going to college and receiving that so-called whatever degree it is in that theologian seminary school, which is off. Because as the scriptures say, freely give and you have freely received. And also, too, again, it ain't it ain't right anyway. You know, Yahweh Shah was a man that has spoke with boldness. He was a man that has spoke with confidence. He was a man that has spoke with surety. And with us being those men that come after him that he had set up, we supposed to do the same exact thing. All right. We got the truth, man. Whenever these people try to come up and downgrade us and try to make it seem like they they have they have the truth and try to play their semantics, whatever the case is, man, trust in the spirit. The spirit's gonna lead us to the right side. The spirit ain't gonna let us down, man. The heavenly father said, if I be with you, can't nobody be against you. And we have to speak with that is with, with surety, just like Yahweh Shah did. But also within that territory it comes people hating you. Okay? And then when once you get into this truth and get to denying yourself. You're going to understand even more that the world hates us. Mm -hmm. This place isn't with us, man. Mainly our people, because that, that refers to the world, Israel, and also to everybody else that you see out here, man. Because we're, we're speaking in opposition of everything that we see that's out here. We're speaking against wickedness. And wickedness is held on high right now. So with us speaking against wickedness, the wicked is going to speak against us. Because we're speaking against the defilement of this world, man. We're speaking within righteousness. And we all know that society hates righteousness, okay? But I'm going to start off on John, the 15th chapter, and I'm going to start at the 18th verse. And it reads, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you're of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. So that speaks for itself. Just because we show that we hate the world, how was that? Because we proclaim righteousness. We proclaim equity. We proclaim justice. We read these scriptures and we live by it. OK. So with that being the case, we're showing we're proclaiming, we're confessing our our uh, what's the word I'm looking for, our enmity with the world. So with that, the case with that being the case, you're going to catch hell. 
People are going to come against you. People are going to talk shit about you. People aren't going to like you. That's just the truth of it, all right? But we're not supposed to give a damn about that, man. All right? Why is that? Because we have righteousness on our side. We have Yahweh's side with us, man. And we're fighting for a kingdom. We're fighting for something greater. We're fighting for something in righteousness that's going to last forever. That's what we're fighting for. Okay? So with that being the case, man, these people are going to hate us, man. These Christians coming up against us which shows you they're of the world. <laughs> Two-thirds of our people of the, of the world, everybody that you see out here of the world. So with them hating you, with them coming against you, hey, man, that just comes within the territory. Okay? I wanted to start off with that scripture. But mainly, um, you know, of course, this lesson is going into the doctrine that we have and how people are going to be against the doctrine, just like they were against with Yahweh Shai, which made me brought out this precept in John, the 15th chapter, because they're of the world. So they're going to hate the doctrine of life. OK, but I'm going to go to John, the seventh chapter. Give me one sec. And I'm going to jump to the 14th verse. OK, because this thing, this thing of ours, as the apostles say, this thing of ours didn't come from us. All right. It came from the heavenly father. This doctrine had came from above, okay? Which shows that we don't have to go to any semin seminary school or anything to receive this, man, all right? This thing was given to us from the Heavenly Father. It was gifted to us, all right? And with this being gifted to us, we have a job we have to do. We have to teach it, just like it was brought to us. The Heavenly Father is using us as vessels to teach other individuals as well, just like it was sent down to us. Because we believe that the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai dwells within us, which shows you that this isn't, of, this isn't of our own work, but this is from above and it's being distributed through his men. OK, but this is John, the seventh chapter. I'm going to start at the 14th verse and it reads now about the midst of the feast. Yahweh Shai went up into the temple and taught and the Jews marveled, saying, how know this man letters having never learned? All right. He didn't he didn't go to school. OK, he didn't learn under top high priests. He didn't learn under doctors. There was even a point in time when he was a 12 year old boy that he was actually teaching the doctors. Now, he was learning certain things in reverse, but ultimately he learned all of this from the Heavenly Father. OK, because he is the word of the Heavenly Father. So and that's another reason, too, man. All right. He didn't have to be taught from these men because he was the word. The word was already engrafted in him. OK. So with that being the case, of course, he's going to teach. Same thing within us. If we're those men, this word is engrafted in us. This is part of our being. It is part of our mindset. OK, so when people come up astonished and they marvel at it, it's just like they marvel at Yahweh Shai, there's nothing to be shocked. It just shows us forth that the Holy Spirit is dealing within us. And also, on the other hand, within us teaching, we do have to have confidence and boldness that is dwelling within us, man. Like the lesson Apostle Tahar brought out, let our speech be of, of season. Okay? <laughs> we got the word, man. Ain't no need to be nervous. Now, of course, within us talking, we might pronounce certain things wrong. All right? Just because Isaiah, the third chapter, said that I will, out of Israel, I will take away the eloquent. Matter of fact, I'm going to bring this up really quick and jump back. I'm going to bring this out really quick in Isaiah chapter 3, just so I don't speak idly. OK, I want to, you know, of course, this thing is of season. So we're going to make sure that we're on point with it. OK, but this is Isaiah chapter three. And let me see here. I'm going to start at verse. Let me see. I believe it's in Isaiah, the third chapter. It's going into the daughters of Zion. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. This is Isaiah chapter three, verse three, and it's going into the, the things. That, um, of course, it's part of the curses, but it's going into what the Lord said he's going to take out of our people. OK, so when you go to Isaiah chapter three, verse three, and when you read this, this is pretty much all the things that are required to build a kingdom. OK, and that was going through the curses, what was going to happen to us. OK, but of course, we're rebuilding this kingdom. But there's still things like, for example, you know, stammering lips and a diverse tongue, as it's written in the book of Isaiah. So that comes with part of it. So just because you might stutter on occasions or you might say, uh, or whatever the case might be, you might even word something completely different on accident. And then have to redo a video like the apostle said. So be it. 
But we have this doctrine of life. But really quick, I'm going to bring this out in Isaiah 3 and 3. And it's going into the things that the Lord's going to take at a point in time going to take away. It says the captain of 50, the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent order. So that goes into just the, the very good speaker, the speaker of the house, should say. And after a period of time that was brought away and it's being brought back. But we might not be able to pronounce things as specific as we would like to. But we're, we pretty much are bringing out the points. OK, so I'm going to jump back to where I left off at in John, the seventh chapter. And it says in the Jews marveled, saying, how does how know what this man letters having never learned? And look, when you go into this word letters. That word there is grammar. <laughs> That's where you get the word grammar from. OK, and it says a letter, any writing or document or record, a note of hand, bill, bond, account, written acknowledgement of a debt, a letter, an epistle, the sacred writings, because we being Israelites, you know, even going into our heritage, being brought up as youth, we were always taught the sacred writings and we would have to go to certain places and and learn from from pretty much, you know, a, a schoolmaster. If we were higher an official, if we were higher up, you know. But hey, there was a point in time when, you know, especially even when you go to it right now, we, we don't have that. You know, we learn strictly from the spirit, which was given to our apostles, just like it was that was given to the apostles back then through Yahweh Shai. And we have this. OK, but we don't have to go to school to get any of this, man. We have the doctrine. It is given to us from the spirit. The spirit of the Lord. Again, now it started with with our apostles and elders went to our teachers went to us. And hey, the longer we hear, we're going to continue to teach through the spirit. OK, those are the true letters. That's the true doctrine. I'm going to continue in verse 17. And it says, uh, actually, no, verse 16. Yahweh I answered them and said, my doctrine is not of mine, but his that sent me. If any man would do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So if we're supposed to do what we're supposed to do, if the Spirit's dealing with us, if we speak in confidence, we gonna, we got the doctrine, man. That goes into the 100% truth. If Yahweh Shai had the doctrine and he said that it was instructed for it to give it to certain men on the planet Earth, we have it, okay? Because this doctrine, this doctrine is life, okay? Really quick, I'm going to bring out Deuteronomy, one of my favorite scriptures. Chapter 32, because Yahweh said what? It is given on high from my father. So this is Deuteronomy chapter 32. I'm going to start at verse. Let's see here. I'm going to start at verse one. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. And, you know, who's the word of the heavenly father? That's Yahweh OK, verse two, my doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Now, when it rains, where does rain come from? It comes from the clouds, of course, but that comes from the heavens. That comes from on high. And what is water referred to as? All right, water is a cleanser, but also it's referred to as the word. Okay? It's referred to as the doctrine, you know? And with that coming from on high, hey, what's it doing? It's watering the tender herbs. The trees, so forth. We receive that doctrine. We receive that water. All right. So what is having that, man? Hey, what is growing into lively cedars, man? We we have this 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 um, life source within us because water is also a life source. And that's what we have. And again, it was given from high. That's why when you go to James, the first chapter, starting at the 17th and 18th verse, it says every good gift and every perfect gift come from the father of lights. All right. And what we have is a perfect gift. This doctrine. This knowledge, this understanding, we have it. And these people, these naysayers can't confound us with it, man. Not if we're of that number, if we of those men, if we come in with boldness like Yahweh Shai was, and we believe, man, there's no way possible that these people will confound us. They can only marvel at the fact that we know these things. OK, this is Acts. And I'm going to bring up an account of the apostles when you go to Acts, the fourth chapter. And I'm going to start at the 13th verse. And this goes, this is going into when they were brought in front of the Samhedrin, the council, when they uh, pretty much um, during the time of Pentecost, when they had healed the, when they had healed the lame man. Okay. And they had did it in the name of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. And that was when they had told them, you ain't supposed to speak of this word, man. But they was marveled at the fact that these men 
knew this stuff. Just like they marveled that Yahawashai knew it when he had taught it to the temple. All right, they, the same thing they said to Yahawashai, these men don't got no letters like that. How do they know these things? Okay, and they were cut. But this is Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, and isn't that what they call us? Don't they call us unlearned, ignorant? Oh, the bums. Oh, these men don't know nothing. Oh, they, they're, they're unlearned. I went to school. I got, a math, I got a doctor's degree. That's what they always try to say, man. But when these, when these high priests, when these wicked Pharisees had came up to them, man, and they were asking them questions and they were they were astonished at the result of what they, well, they were astonishing at the response of these men. All right. The same things that they say about us. All these men are unlearned and ignorant. They said the same things about Apostle, Apostle Peter and Apostle John. OK, I'm going to continue. They marveled and they took knowledge of them and they had been with they had took knowledge of them that, had, that they, they had been with Yahweh Shai. <laughs> so they referred back to what was written in John seven. Man, these men had to have been with this dude. They saying the same thing he's saying. They ain't wavering. You know, they're not wavering. They're not second guessing themselves. Being in this truth, we're not supposed to second guess ourselves, man. And, you know, even talking about myself being brought up, man, you know, hey, I, it was a point where I used to do that a lot. You know, when with us being younger in this thing, hey, those those certain times might happen, man. But this is the time where we're not supposed to second guess ourselves, man. All right. Especially if it's within the spirit. Now, of course, if you got to ask counsel from certain brothers that, you know, the spirit's dealing with, so be it, man. But we got to be confident. OK, we got to be bold, just like our Lord and Savior was bold. If we believe that we come in within that stead, if we believe that that spirit is dealing with us, there's no need to waver. All right. It's written in James, a double minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And he, he um, shows an example of a, a sea, wa a, a, a waving sea. All right. It's never on course if it's always waving. We got to be mellow and balanced in this thing. We got to be calm, cool and collective. And within that, man, we can speak within boldness. Look at our examples, okay? I'm going to bring out the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter. This is Ephesians chapter six. I'm going to start at verse 19. Well, um, this is just the verse. And this is what Paul, this is a letter that Paul has sent to the church in Ephesus, okay? And it says, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to speak Salakia, to make known the mystery of the gospel. When you really read about Paul, man, Paul was on fire. Paul didn't hold back with it. He was on fire, man. He was an example of how we need to be. All right. That little one, that little one being reborn and just full fledged on, on fire for the word. That's how we got to be, man. All right. That's how Yahweh was. Yahweh said, I'm of my father's business. So how much does that apply to us as well? If we know the Heavenly Father to be our Father too. We got to be about our Father's business. With our Father <laughs> giving us the certain attributes to build this business. Hey man, we got to go We got to go with confidence, man. You know? If you speak without confidence, if Yahweh spoke without confidence, he wouldn't, have, he wouldn't have woke up thousands of people. If he didn't speak this with confidence, the 12, the 12 apostles, the tw disciples around the time... Those 12 men wouldn't have been converted. If our apostles, Peter and John, didn't speak, or even the rest of the 12, didn't speak with confidence, what would happen, man? You wouldn't see what we have today. We wouldn't be here. If our apostles of Great Millstone, who are the apostles today, didn't speak with confidence, none of us would be here. All right? So speaking with confidence takes you a long way if the Spirit's dealing with you. All right? Speaking with confidence is going to help build this nation. It's going to help build this kingdom. Speaking with boldness, okay? These people are going to marvel at us. That's part of the territory. <laughs> They're going to talk mess. They're going to act like they know more than you. There's even going to be times when they, the, these people will tell you, see, see, I cut you, I cut you. You don't know what you're talking about. And you can bring all the points to them in the world and they still won't get it, man. Don't let that waver within your faith. We got the truth. We know it. These men were meant, that were set up to be that, all right? And this is actually an account of these men <laughs> that claim they knew what they were talking about, but this is what they were saying behind closed doors. This is wisdom of Solomon chapter two, verse 13. And this is going into the words of them that are without. 
All right. And when you read this, you can really this is really the wicked scribes and the Pharisees saying this, man. This is this is prophecy. This is written way before. All right. But with those individuals, those wicked scribes and Pharisees, those niggas saying this. And of course, you know, these Christians are saying the same exact thing. All right. But within them saying this, they know that we write. They know that we write. It's already written. This is wisdom of Solomon 2 and 13. And this is what they say. He professes to have knowledge. So like he professes to have the knowledge of God and he called himself the child of the Lord. He was made to reprove our thoughts. He is grievous unto us even to behold for his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. OK, so, yeah, man, we proclaim to have the knowledge of the most high, just like Yahweh did, because we have that. We have the 100 percent truth. All right. We were made to reprove the thoughts of these people. And when you're reproving somebody that's wicked, they don't hear it. <laughs> so they're going to talk shit. They're going to resort to carnal affairs. So so be it, you know. But we got this truth. And it says he is grievous unto us even to behold, man. That goes in them saying of, about the apostles back then. They were ignorant. All right. They didn't have they, they were looked at to be ignorant. Let's go back to it. All right. When you go back to it in the book of Acts, the fourth chapter. What does it say? It says they were unlearned and ignorant. OK, I'm going to read back at Wisdom of Solomon, chapter two, verse 15. He is grievous unto us even to behold, for his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. And that's what sets us apart from everybody else. All right. Why are, why are our ways different? Because we have the spirit of Yahabashim Yahabashah. We have the instruction on how to conduct ourselves being men. We have the instructions on how to carry ourselves. We have the instructions on how to preach, on how to teach. We have the instruction of the Heavenly Father, which was gifted unto us. Okay? That's what makes us different. Hey, listen, we can't waver, man. We almost out of here. These people are going, there's going to be more people that will come against us. Talk mess. Say that we, we don't know nothing. Make videos and bring out certain points that don't have nothing to do with anything. K-Dub. <laughs> but hey, man, that's part of the territory. We got this thing, man. Let's go, champ. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And peace and salutations and many blessings to the elect Akim, the house of David, kicking his word of sincerity and in truth. Shalom.